time in Big Ten wins, and his team is rolling at 17 and 2. Just about set here for Mac Arena. Our officials, Paul Sells, Kelly Pfeiffer, and Courtney Green, as Edie and Reed will meet at midcourt, and we are underway for Mac Arena. Llewellyn will control, getting that start with McDaniel out with the suspension on the road. Llewellyn coming back from a torn ACL a year ago. You see that big brace on his left leg. Well, down the outside by Jones, spins away as he rejects the screen. Curling off Burnett on the top of the key, looking inside. Cut off by Smith. Reed coming off a career high 20. Gets inside, floats it up short. Rebound back half the lawyer, and Purdue is off and running. That's one way to attack Zach Eady. Just let Terrace Reed use the bounce, kind of put him in space, but Eady getting a good contest, and Purdue's defense wins round one. Get it to Edie. This is exactly where Juwan Howard wanted this defense to have him catch the ball. They want to force him out of the paint, do their work early on the defensive end. Here it is, another kind of longer touch for Edie, and he leaves it a little too strong. And Kaufman Rank couldn't claim it, and Michigan gets the stop. That was really well done by Terrence Reed. You mentioned they want to push him off that block. That's exactly what he does there. Now, Olivier Kamwa is going to have his hands full in terms of blocking out. You see Trey Kaufman Wren. It's flying in there every time, but a very solid defensive possession for a Michigan team that has struggled on that under the floor for the season. Good to see Coffin Wren on the floor. Okay, after a tough ball at Iowa a couple days ago in the win. 84-70 for Purdue. Here's Kamwa, his first touch in the mid-range. Jumper too strong. Good block out by Zach Eady. Jones running the floor. Find his point guard, Smith. Let's get that entry pass in for Coffin Wren. Around the horn it goes for Lawyer. Now here's Eady. Double immediately. Swing, swing, Jones, extra lawyer, corner, three ball, money. Well, Fletcher Lawyer is just riding that heater. 53% from three in Big Ten play. Unselfish play, though. Lance Jones could have put that up. It was one more for a better look from the corner. Williams leaves it, Llewellyn. Juan Howard's been really proud of how he stayed mentally through this process of returning from the ACL. Still trying to get back to 100% physically and up top of the head. And what a move to squeeze it through by Reed. And that's clearly what Michigan wants to do early in this game. One-on-one, -on -one, Purdue just going to let Edie defend Terrace Reed. And it's been off the bounce. He faces up, he gets baseline, and uses that reverse layup. Jones on the outside, Lawyer, pump fake, drive into the paint, floats it short. Edie with the offensive board. He's been so good as a vacuum on the offensive glass. And Smith clears the lead for two. And maybe that jump starts his offense, knowing he's still facilitated, but just eight of his last 31 from the field. Nice play right there for Michigan. That's the ball game. If you can't secure the defensive glass, Purdue will just bludgeon you there. That was one of Jawan Howard's main messages after the game against Illinois. As Burnett leaves it short, Smith wants to run. No real numbers. And he'll reset here. Brady Smith, a really good rebound. Guard. That's what he does best. The he can just drop dimes. What a look there. The initial surge wasn't there. Pulls it out. Michigan doesn't match up. And Trey Coffin ran the beneficiary. So Smith making it happen as he generally does. Chance for three now for Kaufman Wren. Just four points and five boards and that tough ball against Iowa. The fact that Braden Smith now eight straight games of six assists or more. He, he has not shot the basketball as well. I, th I thought at times that maybe with his pull up he's a little bit off balance. But still, he, he is one of the best point guards in this league. And I, I have no doubt, I don't think that the Purdue coaching staff has any doubt that that jumper is going to come back. Still shooting 42% from three on the season. 7.2 assists. Llewellyn on the take. Probes through on Edie. Fades. And gets the roll. You mentioned it, Noah, but really good to see him back. He's coming off his best half, I think, of the season since his comeback, really. And seven points, all of those coming in the first half against Illinois. Just to see him back on the floor and, and playing with some confidence is a good thing to see. Certainly experienced, 24 years old, as a transfer coming from Princeton. Get it inside, Edie with another post touch, can't finish. And rebound back around and secured by Williams. Terrence Reed has continued to not let Edie get those deep post catches, and he's done a really nice job doing his work early. Burnett, Smith cuts him off, Burnett forces it up short, and there's Smith with another board. Smith, Jones, the trailer, no hesitation. Cut well, he's a killer in transition over 1.3 points per possession when he gets out in the open court and he is hunting those threes 
This is the tough part handling Purdue. They make their run and they make it so difficult, so good on the glass. Their rebounding margin the other day, plus 26. Here's a quarter tray and short for Mowellen. Well, they also get off to great starts, Mowellen. They, they have, for the most part this season, thrown the first punch. Smith with a hesitation, stops, and he's back. Well, it's a smart play. Namari Burnett gets off his feet. And Wise decision there. Braden Smith, what a start for Purdue. Rocking and rolling on the offensive end of the floor. I'll get into that mix. But I think also, you know, the, the turnovers are such a big part of when Purdue struggles. And on top of that, the shooting. The last six games, 41% from three for Purdue. In five of those six games, they've made over nine threes. So when you're shooting it around 80, that's going to get defensive fits. That painter's been really most pleased with Edie's efforts getting on the floor diving at loose balls the offensive rebounding and that's what Edie says he's focusing on more than anything right now the points are going to come he's scoreless to start this game and Purdue is still up 13-4 think about Noah that play he made in Indiana where he beat every player for the Hoosiers to the floor and started that break for Lance Jones Cheddar's in the game hands it to Llewellyn a tight rope that baseline Kayak in there as well and the three ball in and out from Kamwa. It's been Kamwa's deal, too. Now, for his last 19 from three, he, he can shoot it from there, but he's struggled over the last four games. It's important that he's Gillis on the floor for Purdue, and here's a foul. Kamwa on the drag down of Edie on the post entry. I, I just don't know if Kamwa has the strength that we've seen from Terrace Reed to really battle him on the block. Here's the play we were talking about. This ball is on the floor. Zach Eady, he goes to the floor, Khalil Ware just reaches, and that's kind of the way that that game went all evening long for the Hoosiers. We talk about the skill set that Eady possesses and his fluidity of movement, but to be 7 foot 4, 300 plus pounds, and to hit the deck like that, bounce right back up, there's just not many body types of uh, uh, people of that elk that can do that. Smith's going to have to make it happen here with 5 to 2, up and under, great finish. That's just really poor defense by Michigan rotating out. You got to show bodies at 80, but Braden Smith is a player too, and he could have shot the three, he could have gotten the mid range, and he showed that he could also get all the way to the rim. He, he had every option available to him right there. Cheddar responds a three ball. And I will say, Will Cheddar is having an incredible season shooting the basketball. Not the highest volume, but there with Edie guarding him, that pick and pop, that, that can be effective. He's shooting 63% for three. He's only had two games where he's been below 50%. It's pretty amazing. Edie triple team outside for Morton. Around it goes for Lawyer. Eight to shoot. Step back on Kayak. Comes up short. And a foul. Loose ball staying here. And Cobar is going to pick up his second. They are showing so many bodies at Zach Eady, and it's a real gamble because Purdue has guys around him that can make plays. Here, when this shot goes up, I mean, you're just fighting for your life, and Olivier Kamwa gets two quick ones, and that's a big deal because he's a massive part of their offense. So Reed's going to come back in four. They leave Smith wide open, and he throws a three. Right, General Llewellyn's going under, but he's not even in the same zip code as Brayton Smith. Who has outscored Michigan by himself. Smith nine, Wolverine seven. I think this is just a matter of time for Braden Smith to bust out of this little shooting slump he's been in. Llewellyn, Reed, Kayak, Howard, and Chen. Get it inside and takes it back away. Reed couldn't handle it. Here comes Morton the other way. Swing it. Lawyer, quick and catch and shoot. But he comes up short. Kayak will clear the board and run the show. Cheddar. On the outside with a size advantage on Smith. Takes him to the basket and had it knocked out of bounds. It'll give way for Burnett to come back in for missing it. And Heidi to check in for the first time for Purdue. Well, we're going to have Braden Smith just fly off this pin down. Llewellyn is going to take an interesting route. Oh, play went away. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the, the magic just dies in front of you. <laughs> but anytime I can tell you, it's a, it's a great it's a great moment. Oh, I look forward to your telly. Tremendous. I'm trying to find one more C-word, but it can't come to me in a moment. Edie nearly had the rebound and knocked away. There, the three. Right there the three. Kayak. They had numbers, couldn't take advantage. Now Kayak is double. Howard's left alone in the corner. Finally, they find him and a line up the three. 
How about Jace Howard knocking down his first shot of the season? Only been back two games. Good hustle by Michigan there, and Howard paying it off from the corner. Sun, 6'8", 225, to play that guard spot, to play the wing. Versatility, the name of the game, but Gillis is right there to get it back. Boy, Cheddar is trying to bump Edie on the roll, but that's a scary thought when you got Mason Gillis raising behind. 15 of his last 30 from the three-point line, 50% on the season. That's what makes Edie so tough to guard. The shooting around him is just phenomenal. Howard gets rid of it. Reed working on Edie inside. The spin. Can't score. And Edie was right there. A quality contest. Smith feeling it early. Quick nine points. Shovel it. Heidi. Slight hesitation. Caught up. More than another shot. Comes up short. He didn't have to fade away there. I thought he could have just. It's a good cut. He could have went straight up with it. And then Burnett is fouled on the circle around. Going to be Morton. So the first foul on Purdue, and Morton will take a seat. Lance Jones comes back in. Jones, Smith, Gillis, Heidi, and Edie against Cheddar, Kayat, Reed, Howard, and Burnett. Let's see if Michigan can get Namari Burnett going. He just has not been a factor offensively. He's continued to struggle last three games, just 27% from the field. Only 38 on the year. Inside, Edie floats it short. And that's just Terrace Reed doing his work early. Edie has caught that a good foot or two outside where he normally does. Kayat will reset. 6'9", 215, sophomore, shows off the ball handling ability. 6'10", wingspan, instinctual player. Leave it for Burnett off the screen. Cheddar on Gillis. Kick it, same spot for Howard. Different result comes up short. Knocked away, Reed. Last to touch it. And it leads to a timeout on the floor with 11.27 to play in this first half. Braden Smith controlling the game in a number of ways, but finally, very often. No, so you, no, it, it stands out. When it you it use deserves the some, some work here. You know, no, I'm, really I'm with you. That was well done. Edie's going to get a breather here. So Smith stays on the floor. Kaufman, Wren, Heidi. Of early action for Caleb first and Lance Jones, the five for Purdue. The full court pressure here from Howard. First, and defense from Cheddar. Now to switch off the screen. Smith looking inside, half the shot clock down. Hoffman Red, Heidi, Jones, everybody gets a touch on this possession for the Boilermakers, and Jones floats it short. Five on four if they hurry the other way. Jones quick to recover. Cheddar. The hesitation, the drive, the double, the swing pass intercepted. Who else? Smith the other way. No luck. Oh, pass. He tried to thread the needle. First is there for the bucket and the foul. Right place, right time. No doubt about that. This post double incredibly effective great job by Trey Kaufman Rana coming over and making Cheddar uncomfortable Heidi couldn't handle the no look but Caleb first running the floor. He picks this thing up Opportunistic and now an opportunity for three <laughs> Just the ricochet up Cam Heidi was just like yeah, it was it was one of those it was almost like a cartoon <laughs> Where it bounces off one person's head and then it lands and perfectly it in the other up person. And, yes, it's like space jam <laughs> Either way, it results in a three-point play, and Purdue has extended this lead to 14. Reed on the outside. If they can find him some openings. Get it to the post on a double immediately by Kaufman Red. Swing it. Burnett, that's a deep one. Comes up short. I just think he's going to step in. Yeah, it's another step into the line there. You're going to get the same look. Mother Burnett has been struggling mightily with his jumper, and that post double, that's, that's going to be available. Lawyer absorbs the contact and finish. First, nearly tips it at the effort of Trey Jones can cash in. Kaufman wins. They cannot keep him off the glass. And finally, he'll go the other way on a loose ball foul. Matt Painter will love the effort. I mean, you're getting multiple efforts from Caleb first. Trey Kaufman wins. And this shot goes up. And it is just a war for this ball. Great tap back there. Lance Jones gets a good look. 
Kaufman ran once again with Purdue just one of the elite offensive rebounding teams nationally 16th in the country in terms of offensive rebound percentage well up back in there, trying to bounce it and throw it a little bit behind Reed. Jones on the steal, quickly the other way. The cross on Cheddar, all the way in, can't finish. First good play, but Cheddar does. Back to back possessions where Purdue was right there with the offensive boards, but come away with nothing. Well, it calls out the set. Burnett, entry, Reed, strength, no. Post double really well done. Coffin run coming over. I think he got a piece of that shot. Jones and a foul away from the ball. Chatter was battling with Coffin Wren. He's gonna pick it up. Watch the way Coffin Wren is just cracking down. He's got Reed's got an angle on Caleb first, but Trey Coffin Wren just cleaning up this mess. So Cheddar picks up his first. Already the sixth team foul for Michigan. So free throws the rest of the way now for Purdue. Jones, that's it. Coffin Red working on Reed. They're going to like the matchup. They're going to play that left shoulder. This is where he wants to get back to. And it was pretty well defended by Terrace Reed. Reed's done a good job. Yeah. Close defense. In this first half, Williams is back on the floor with the air flowing in the wind. Working on Lawyer. Bully ball inside, but he can't finish. Solid basketball more than anything right now. This going to struggle to create any offense playing without Doug McDaniel here on the road. The second row team is going to miss out of the six. He's suspended. Great pass inside. First with a pace of the way up. Purdue now one of their last 11 from the field. Michigan one of their last nine. And the Boilermakers with three straight trips down where they have missed bunnies at the rim. Shadow sets the screen for the low. Burnett, no hesitation. That's short. I, I just don't love that shot from Amari Burnett. If you've made a couple, I'm about it. But that's, that's a tough look right there for a guy that's not shooting the ball that well. Jones. Oh, what a move on the blow by, but he can't finish. Williams with numbers. William long strike. Parkman Ray got a piece again. Lawyer is carnage out here. <laughs> and he got the foul call. Llewellyn took a shot to the face. Lawyer's going to go to check on him. Cheddar has his hands on his knees, and we can all take a breath with a timeout on the floor. 7.47. Yeah, so now it's like getting a little bit raggedy here. There was multiple bodies just strewn on the floor at the end of the last play. and Yeah, one of those stretches that you see then on social media with the song, Let the Bodies Hit the Floor yeah. in the background. And now Lawyer can't even hit the floor. That's one way to put an end to the spell. Zach Eady is first bucket in emphatic fashion. Well, it looks like Terrace Reed's got the defensive board, but Zach Eady just takes it right from him and goes up and tears the rim off. So Purdue extends it. Largest lead at 16 now. Williams slicing through the lane for two. I like it. Michigan's got to do more of that right there. Get Terrence Williams in some pin down action. He goes right at Eady, gets an angle. They've run much more of that for him this season. He's become a real player and coming off a tough shooting performance against Illinois. But Terrence Williams has got to be involved offensively here. Half the shot clock gone for Jones. Picks up the dribble. Leaves a Kaufman Wren on Cheddar. Kick it. Smith. Baseline. Bounce it. Kaufman Wren. The spin. And the score. Wow. With the left hand. Something you don't see very often for Trey Kaufman Wren. He loves that right, but they're a, a really nice play and nice touch with that left hand. Five points now for the redshirt sophomore, averaging just seven on the season. Llewellyn at the controls once again. And in this extended run, just a little over a year removed from that torn ACL. Tough pull up, deep two is short. Cheddar claims the offensive board and had it blocked, but a foul. Smith came in on the help, got a little chunk of the arm, and Cheddar will shoot two. Llewellyn was so off balance. Lance Jones was kind of chasing him. Looked like he might have gotten that hand in there on that hip, but you have to think Llewellyn still coming back off that injury. Didn't look super confident going up with it. Nice job by though Michigan on the offensive glass. Getting a second chance opportunity.
Oh, we got a chance for some chicken. <laughs> Three chicken is unbelievable. Is that steak? The fans can feel it. They can taste the crispiness. They can smell the aromas. The chicken, the fries, they're right there. Oh, ice in his veins for Will Cheddar. This is the loudest the arena's been all game. Will just said Cheddar, Cheddar is Cheddar better Cheddar than chicken. That's right. <laughs> They'll have more opportunities. This, this goes all game. Those promos, Illinois does it, Northwestern does it, Purdue now does it. It, it, is, it is big time. Smith breaks the press himself. Approaching the six minute mark of this first half. Lawyer, swing it, Edie, back to Lawyer. 14 to shoot. Hooks it. Smith, great entry. What else to do? And Edie is fouled. That's the first time tonight that we've seen Terrace Reed kind of get buried by Edie. Good action by Purdue. Moving that defense and then ducking Zach in. Terrace Reed, get, you, you'll see right here, he just gets caught in a real tough spot. And he gets behind him. Now you're like that. Now that, that was a lot of ball up top. And that's a tough one there for Terrace Reed. Well, it's extra tough because now Smith has that jumper working a little bit. So he went to hedge on the No doubt. And that's, that's got to be a hard decision. That is, you are really in a tough spot. Because Brayden Smith is such a threat to come off the ball screen. But you've got the National Player of the Year rolling to the rim who can physically manhandle you. It, it's not an envious position to be in for Terrace Reed. And Edie catches it. Both free throw attempts in the country by a pretty wide margin. A quiet four points and a loud 17-point advantage for the Boilermakers. Reed on the outside. Good slip by Demari Burnett. Well, well in from three. He's got it. That, that cut by Burnett gets Purdue's attention there. He slipped it. I thought Terrence Reed missed him, but because of that cut, you get an open jumper for Jalen Llewellyn. Smith will reset here. Our construction from the side. And now they'll go with 15 to shoot. And he sets that ball screen. Smith throws, finds. A little behind the lawyer. Five to shoot. Gave up his dribble. Dump it. Edie. Floater. In and out. Pump and Red hits the deck. Five on four. Michigan hurries. Burnett. They slow it down. Burnett on the drive, the kick, Llewellyn, another three ball. He's got it again. Back-to-back -back threes, and Llewellyn's up to eight. Under five to play in this first half. She gets back within 11. Jones to Lawyer, inside, Edie, the strength, had a block. Reed got a hand in the cookie jar. That was a real physical play down there in the post. Terrace Reed hanging in there, and a, a big no call because that would have been his second. Williams pops, comes up short. Smith wants the push. Leave it. Jones, the drive. Had a block from behind. Williams stayed with him, stride for stride. It's out of bounds off Jones, and Michigan will take over. Michigan making some plays on some of these Purdue dribble drives here. A little hesitation and go. Lance Jones getting downhill. And Terrence Williams with a really nice play to stay right in there. And we're going the other way. Cobb going to come back down the floor at those two early fouls. Four to the bench. So we'll see if their current leading score available. As Jones takes the way in the backcourt. to be a foul on the Wellen and a free throw. One-on-one -on -one situation for Jones. And Lance Jones is just a bulldog. He is going to get after the basketball. A play right there. Michigan certainly in a tough spot from a foul situation. I said Terrace Reed could have picked up his second. He actually does have two fouls right now. Kamwa with two, Llewellyn with two. It's a tough spot to be in here on the road, especially down your, your best guard. Jones 74%. So no McDaniel, Kamwa averaging 17 points per game. Has scored double figures in all but one game this year where he scored just nine against St. John's. He's got four double doubles. But outside of that, Terrace Reed had 20 in their last game at home against Illinois, career high. He's been much more efficient from the free throw line. Llewellyn now has found his shooting stroke late in this first half as Jones splits the pair. Question is, who can you go to for consistent offense? And it feels like Kamwa is generally that decision. 
but well in the burst. Well, he was a big time scorer though at Princeton before he got to Michigan, and certainly the ACL injury has taken some of his burst, gonna take some time to get it back, but just hitting Kamwa and burning it right off there. Nice play and a good action there for Jalen Llewellyn getting to the basket. Back to 10, Lawyer swings it, Jones, great patience, and a better bucket. This ball movement for Purdue. Fletcher Lawyer has really facilitated, whether that's throwing it into Zach Eady or moving it for shooters. Burnett throws through, shovel it for Williams, 15 to shoot. Howard just bulldozes right through Lawyer. That was strong. Got Fletcher Lawyer going to his left and just went right through him with the Euro step. Two free throws coming for Howard when we come back. Well, it's tough is, to that hear. That is sad to hear that. It's tough to hear. Michigan shooting it pretty well from the outside. Purdue shooting it well from the outside. They're five and seven for three, but just six of twenty-three inside the arc. And while Howard hits the line, not even a chance for Chicken. It's not messing around. <laughs> The I mean, I get it. You know, there's no free food is the ultimate yeah, hundred percent student. I mean, this, this is a big deal. Here. If it's free, I feel like it just means more. Yeah. Even if it's the worst thing in the world, if somehow you got it for free, it feels great. No doubt. No doubt. So Michigan just keeping this within striking distance. Gillis is back on the floor. Lawyer, Jones, Eady, and Smith. Jones creates some separation. Whip it. Corner. Gillis inside. Eady working on Kamwa. And that's just too easy. Well, that was really good by Zach Eady. Though. He kind of read the defense. The ball was loose. He gathered it, surveyed, saw he had one-on-one -on -one coverage, and just went to work. Back to a 13-point game. Just under three to play in the first half. And the Wolverines find a little bit of a run before the break. Burnett just forced his way inside and he traveled. He just went into a brick wall. Mason Gillis came over on the help. There's just nowhere to go there. It's got to be you draw two and you're going to pass the thing. Here's that play by Edie. Him kind of gather this survey and he gets to his left shoulder. It's pretty much game over from that distance. Matt Painter's talked about it a lot over the course of his career, certainly this season. His hands are really underrated. He just always seems to be sure handed. And Lance Jones. Always seems to knock down big threes. That is an elite pass by Braden Smith. <laughs> He's just coming off to the right wing. And he hook passes that thing across the floor. What a pass, and that thing's on a rope. Cheddar, got this time. And Edie right there. Smith keeps the head up. And he'll slow it down, reset, approaching the two-minute mark. Gillis flashing. Gillis, the pump, and the finish. Just a good cut right there. Mason Gillis making himself available, flashing right through there. Braden Smith has been in total control of this first half. And another steal by Jones. Takes away from Llewellyn, and he's back. Lance Jones playing thief in this first half. Jalen Llewellyn, you, you think about someone who hasn't played a ton of point guard minutes, and you see this type of pressure. He's having to bring it up against the guy who is just looking to take his rock every time. It can wear you out. You can hear that the crowd, and they appreciate the effort that Lance Jones has given guarding the basketball. See the support from Jawan Howard on the sideline. And Llewellyn can finally sit. He's had his hand on his back, reassuring him. Leaving his spirits as high as possible. You think about it, like Doug McDaniel has handled all of this this year, and he's coming back from a serious knee injury. And you haven't seen that type of ball pressure. It, it can take you a little bit of time to adjust to that. Get used to seeing it again, and Jones is just kind of bulldogging him right now, trying to wear him out. Empty trip to the line there. Rebound tracked down by Reed. High out back in there. And he'll bring it across. And it's Burnett. Guarded closely by Jones, Kayak, Reed, looking for some kind of action, attacks on Edie, and he draws the contact. They're going to call it on the floor. There's a 15 foul on Purdue, so a side out for Michigan. It's going to be really interesting to see Michigan initiate offense with this five on the floor. Not that Burnett can't do it, but right there, Yusuf Kayak had to really bring the ball up. 
Get Michigan into their offensive set. I'm guessing that that's something that he has not done a whole lot of this season. John Howard believes that that was in the act of shooting. In fact, Zach Eady lined up for the free throw in a rebounding position. They gotta get it in, and they do for Reed. A fresh 20. Reed will pull. Too strong. Rebound, Kaya, and he blew the bunny. We've seen a lot of missed layups tonight on both ends. Right now, a patented Purdue run to end the first half, and it's been Lance Jones, the igniter. With the space he's got right there, he's got that whole side. Starts on the left side of the floor, Edie's posted left block, and he's just taking his man, Terrence Reed, working out. 9 nothing. Boilermaker run. Burnett can't end it, and it's going the other way, and a loose ball foul on Cheddar. So more free throws for Purdue. It's number two on Cheddar. The foul trouble continues. Three on Llewellyn, two on Combo and Reed, and now on Cheddar as well. Already a, a thin team without McDaniel. Depth just isn't quite what they expected coming into the season. And we'll see how Jawan Howard will play this the remainder of this game. There's 57 seconds left in this first half. And Michigan has taken that first gut punch from the number two team in the country. Where he gets to the free throw line as much as just about anybody in the country. Nearly 10 more times per game than their opponents, which is number one in the Big Ten, second in the country, and Gillis for two and the three very quickly. Jawan Howard will take a timeout. 53.2 left in his first half, and Lance Jones, Kentucky. Tough night at the office. They go down. Minnesota hosting number 13, Wisconsin as well. All the action around the nation, and right here in West Lafayette. We're going to hang. Infinity 10G Network halftime report. Burnett will bring it across. Two for one opportunity here for Michigan. Jenner with Edie on the perimeter. Burnett. Now he has the switch with a big man. Wants to take advantage. Entry in for Reed. Quiet first half. And he is on the board with a nice bucket there. And that was well done by Michigan there. Recognizing Purdue's switches. Terrace Reed pushing Mason Gillis up the lane. They throw it over the top. And he's able to split that double. But good recognition by Michigan's guards. Reed coming off the 20-point game. Got that early bucket tonight. That one is second. He's got four. Now Purdue will hold for one. With a shot clock dark. Morton to Edie. Five seconds. Lawyer. Three seconds. Pulls it over Reed. He's got it. Drills a three at the hole. Lawyer feeling the love. And Purdue with a full pickup. And he was for this Purdue team. Purdue will have the basketball to start this second half with a 24 point lead. This place sounds like the club. Love Mackey is rolling. Smith gets it in. Edie had to go and get it. Couldn't put it in. Reed has done a good job defensively on Edie. Just six points in that first half, but it's been the others who have gotten going after Edie has just been unstoppable in the previous three games. Second chance now for Michigan. I just think it's because Terrace Reed's done his work early. I mean, he's definitely pushed Zach Eady out, made him a little bit uncomfortable, and, and he's back. Llewellyn loses his footing, trying to get it back with seven, and it will be a jump ball staying with Michigan. Trey Coffin Ren to get switched off, and you see Llewellyn just. Losing that footing and now fighting for his life. Just having to shoot. Llewellyn will inbound on the floor with Burnett, Williams, Cowboy, and Reed. But Purdue has taken away almost every under out of bounds by just getting on top of the cutters to the corner. Williams sticks it. Let's count. Man, that's a tough shot in the shot clock. But Terrence Williams using that size over the top of Braden Smith. Four star prospect out of high school now. A senior season averaging nearly 13 a game. And starting for Purdue. What a pass. Smith to Jones. Get the corner. 
And it'll stay here on the loose ball foul. Edie dragged down, and it's Reed is number three. That's just such a good read by Braden Smith. I mean, you, you're taking a look at the help side defender, is the ball. So, again, there, there's a couple schools of thought here. One, it's the letter of the law. It's how it's written in the rule book. Yep. And once you hook down and you make that contact and maintain that contact for long enough, that was quick, but it was long enough, it essentially automatically becomes that flagrant one. And he will get one more opportunity to get a point on the board. But the second thing is, Zach Eadie is just so large, yeah. and he's so smart in how he positions himself for rebounds. There's only so much that can be done, and there's no intent necessarily there from Terrence Reed. No, he's, he's just he's, doing anything he's he can do. He's trying to survive, and it's crazy because he's 6'10", 265. I mean, he's a big body himself. It's just he's not big in relation to what Zach Eady is. But who is? <laughs> not many people in college basketball that are, or pro basketball for that matter. Boban. Yeah, seriously. That's that's like his, his size comparison. Edie with the post touch. Can't finish. Another nice job by Reed, but Edie's right there to play it up. I mean, what else do you want Terrace Reed to do? It was really good defense, but the offensive glass always looms so large for Purdue. Edie stayed with it. Impressive to see him go down, pick that thing up, and bring it right back up to the rim. Burnett on the outside. See if they can get him going at all. Nearly 10 points per game on the season. Just four points and four boards against Illinois. Six to shoot now for Reed. Someone's going to have to make something happen. It's Llewellyn. The rainbow is short. Rebound tapped by Williams. This play by Terrence Williams is going over the top. Amari Burnett, he, he is just, he has lost his jumper and he's surfing for it. Great pass, Smith to Lawyer. Can't finish. Rebound tipped around. Back oh. play but his motor is always so impressive you know he gets his hand on that thing and this is like a Shaquille O'Neal jam right here I mean he just tears it off like you and I used to do on the nerf hoop back in the <laughs> six and this, that's high level it may have taken me to 11 on the nerf hoop. Well, at least you're honest about it oh swaps it out of there he's been phenomenal as the post trap man just coming over and making plays from the back side Edie's the primary defender, but Trey Kaufman Wren, he's coming to post trap every time. And Terrace Reed trying to get this to the rim has no idea that Kaufman Wren is right there behind him. A great entry feat. Counted and one. Williams just sneaks in and Llewellyn with a sneaky pass to get it to him. Right there, Terrence Williams taking advantage of how Purdue has jumped that high side. They're taking away Williams to the corner. So look at the way, just kind of the route. And once Lawyer got that far outside, Terrence Williams did a nice job of recognizing that, getting to his body, and then the pass was on time and on target. So Williams with a, a strong start to this second half. Let's see what Purdue can do. They're defeating the early. Just six points in the first half. And now Edie already with five in the first two and a half minutes of the second half. Jones looking for him. Reed with a nice job being physical. They do get it to him. Edie in the paint is fouled. And Reed may have just picked up his fourth. And he did. And that hurts for Michigan because he's the one body that has been able to really fight Zach. You know, even early in that possession, I mean, he's pushed Edie out to that Big Ten logo. He's really been able to affect early possessions with Edie or early on in the possession with Edie. But this is what Zach Edie does. I mean, he, he just he fouls out your entire front court. So Jawan Howard's going to go to Will Cheddar. And Terrence Reed Jr. is going to have to take the seat. And we'll see how Jawan Howard will balance these rotations now. 
Reed with four personal fouls, 17-12, still left in the game. And they're going to have to send help for Olivier Kamwa because he, he's going to be down there fighting for his life. Just doesn't have the girth or the weight to, to battle what Edie is bringing. Kamwa is still scoreless in this game, and that is going to be called on the floor. So he's worked so hard defensively. Now he has to just find any way to find an opening offensively as Kaufman Wren will pick up his second. He cut through there and just leg with Trey Kaufman Wren. Really nice little action. They're, they're going to look to get him on that block and see if they can find his turnaround jumper. Burnett working on Smith on the outside. Cheddar left all alone. Comes up short. Offensive rebound. Williams has been a force and one. Give Terrence Williams a lot of credit. He, he has come out of the halftime break, even though Michigan down 25. He's out here competing. It's the second time that we've seen him get to the offensive boards. He's refusing to be blocked down, taking some contact, getting to the other side, and now an opportunity for a three-point play. So three on Kaufman Red. And Williams... Looking to crack double figures here. I think he's well on his way to a double double. Nine and six with 17 to go. Mason Gillis is going to come in for Kaufman Run with the foul trouble. So Gillis out there with Edie, Lawyer, Jones, and Smith against Llewellyn, Burnett, Williams, Cheddar, and Kamwa. We have a defending Edie, some light full court pressure. Broken simply. And Smith will get it back on the reload. 15 to shoot for Jones. Back to Smith. Screen from Gillis. Smith dancing. Lawyer, five to shoot. Lawyer's going to make it happen himself when he draws the contact. Just went right at Williams. He'll pick it up. Tough because Olivier Kamwa did his job there with Zach Eady. He really was front him, kept the ball out of his hands, looking to throw it in there. But the shot clock, Fletcher Lawyer, breaking some contact and earning a trip to the foul line. Just showcases. That's a tough call there. Fletcher Lawyer is initiating all of that contact. We see that, I feel like, more and more, especially at the NBA level yeah. now, where What's a lot the of the offensive it, players were. No I mean, it, it truly is. And lawyer, maybe a little Rashid Wallace <laughs> feel. <laughs> Some basketball justice, huh? Burnett will take it the other way. Michigan continuing to battle. This is something that Jawan Howard really liked out of his group a couple days ago against Illinois. They were down big in the second half, and he felt like they battled all the way to the final buzzer. Especially those last couple minutes of the game and just try to keep themselves and keep the energy high Tough one there from Williams offensive board and Tom was on the board That's back-to-back -back trips now where Michigan has found the offensive glass got the second chance opportunity and it's not just Terrence Williams Olivier Kamwa they're giving a great effort See what they can do defensively once again Edie sets the screen for Smith Jones the pump they can drive right past Llewellyn and he's fouled Kamwa frustrated, he hits the deck and leads us to our first time out of this second half. 15 and a half to play, and Purdue well on its way to some real swagger, has great on-ball defensive ability, and then can make shots. And he's, he's shot a high volume, and you look at that percentage, it's now hovering around 35. You know, that, that's good enough, especially when you got all the other shooters around. But he, he does not fear the moment. Like, you can see that. that. That is so obvious. This performance by Purdue today, Lance Jones, his fingerprints all over this game. But how about the fact that Purdue has no turnovers? That That is a wild stat. And that's something that they have certainly harped on, worked on. And when things have gone south for Purdue, it's been most of the time them turning the basketball over. Not the case tonight. Jones mentioned before the season that he personally and this entire team, as Robbie mentioned, playing with a major chip on their shoulder as Cheddar misfires. Smith claims another rebound. Ivy's in the ball game for Lawyer. Here is Jones on the cross, the sauce, and a foul. It'll be two more free throws for Jones, but just that beeline to the bucket and the quick first step at 6'1, 200. It'll be the third personal foul against Cheddar. I, I heard 
someone say the, the other day that Purdue's season doesn't start until the NCAA tournament this year. And I, I just think that that is such a weird way to look at it. You know, someone who played in the Big Ten, I, I value Big Ten championships. I, I value the Big Ten tournament. I, I think that if you can beat all the good teams that are in this league in a three or four day span, that's quite the accomplishment. And, and if you win over the course of 20 games a Big Ten title, that matters. Now, does Purdue need to exercise some NCAA tournament demons? Absolutely. There's no doubt about that. But to say that what they do to get there, well, then why are we even playing the game? Low well and a chance for four. Jones got in the landing space, and Llewellyn's going to have a chance to bring this a little bit closer. I, I think it's a good point. And, and look, we're in a results world. Another look at the extra feed from Cheddar. And Llewellyn, the concentration. This is a results-driven sport, as is the sports are in general. And Purdue, that's been the knock on this program for a long time. But Matt Painter, the job he's done to build this to what it is now, from when he took over to now, 19 years later, to essentially a powerhouse and a consistent top five team in the country the last three years, bringing in top-tier talent, bringing in top-tier transfers. This is a, a team that deserves the credit that they probably haven't gotten because of the tournament. And to your point, even just before you think about March, you've got to appreciate what they're doing right now on the brink of going to 18-2 and two for the second straight year and eating with an easy goose. Just see what Matt Painter has built this building into. I mean, this atmosphere, every time they play here, is phenomenal. The players he's gotten, the, the way that he recruits fit, it has been probably the most impressive thing to me. Cheddar can't hit. Rebound nearly tapped in, and Edie guides it to hide it. Here's Jones. Quick trigger. Yes, sir. Graham Smith just saw him the whole way. I mean, he, he just knew he was getting that thing to Lance Jones. Burnett driving kick. Llewellyn. Nope. And the rebound goes to Williams. Mitty. And he nearly got the roll. Pops to the outside. Smith looking to run again with numbers of your hurry. Swing it. Heidi. Catch it shoot. No. Oh, back tap. Smith. Jones again. Short. Braden Smith just does everything. He does. He controls the game. Burnett first to the rim. Burnett number two. So Michigan continuing to play hard on both ends. This has been a tough season at 7 and 11 coming in. Jawan Howard missing the first handful of games this year. Phil Martelli stepping in as the associate head coach, acting head coach. Well, Howard recovered from some health. Issues and Jones continues to show that fearless nature. Rattles in another three. This is a clinic by Purdue. Kamwa and a reset for Luella. Reed still on the bench for the four foul for Michigan. Williams guarded by Heidi on the outside. Williams runs into a double. Kamwa for three. Drive right there on that baseline. You draw two, you've got Kamwa behind. I just think for Michigan, when you take away Doug McDaniel, and we talked about this at the start of the game, he's taken 34 shots in their last two games. The ball is always in his hands, and then you take that away and you see how you're going to play it. It's just these road games are going to be brutal. They, they really are. Perfect placement for Smith. High off the window for two more. Michigan set to make some changes. Jace Howard and George Washington the third. We'll check in next at ball. As will Ethan Morton for Purdue. Hot potato on the outside. Well and back to Cheddar. Nice flash. Great entry as well. And Kamwa finishes it off. High little basketball. Kamwa pushing Mason Gillis up the lane. Will Cheddar just flashing high post and it's a very pretty pass. Not an easy one, but effective from Will Cheddar. Smith off a series of screens. Hooks it a little bit behind Gillis. And Jones will go into the backcourt and restrict the fast break. Just under 12 to play. Purdue already up to 70 on the night. And they're just showing off on the offensive end. Off the floor. The defensive impact has been there as well. He'll stay out there here with 11.49 to play along with Edie, Gillis, Heidi, and Morton. Jace Howard in the game for Michigan. Get it in for Burnett. George Washington, the third out there. 
Cheddar and Kamwa will round out the five. Howard, that's a tough two. Chase Howard to find his rhythm offensively Howard here tonight and really scored the two games he played. But nice job there, just playing, playing off the closeout and getting to his pull-up jumper. Smith off the screen. Nice job there on the recovery by Howard to stay on Gillis. Edie with a touch, and he's fouled before he can get the shot off. So a foul on the floor. And it looks like Cheddar, if it is, that's number four. The recognition by Purdue's perimeter players there, seeing that Will Cheddar was guarding Edie, and they, they, there was no doubt about where that ball was going. So now Cheddar with four. They'll get territory. Junior in with four. Zach E.D. effect. Or in. Heidi. Oh! He's going for the Heidi goes Heidi for two. Washington. No. Side again, a tough pass, but he's an active cutter instead of Tating. That's a good option, too. <laughs> so I think Matt Painter will complain about that play. And now, Pump and Ren and Caleb first will hop off the bench and check in next dead ball as we approach the midway point of the second half. Howard circles Burnett. Cobble. A tough game offensively. They can't hit that three. And there's a double double for Zach Eady. And his teammate hits the deck. They smile at one another. A tough break, Cam. I'm hitting this double double. Smith outside. Morton hit the three. Just three of 15 from three on the season. Howard can't respond. Smith, lob, Heidi. No whistle comes. That was an ambitious pass from Brandon Smith. Burnett. And the bump and the foul. Going to go on Morton. So 9.36, and it looks like Edie and Smith will head to the bench. Well, somebody's got to give some help. You know, Namari Burnett is chasing Cam Heidi. And those bigs, especially your guard, Zach Edie, he's taking one three all year. Tara Free's got to see that. Just loosen and take away the initial cut. There's no doubt, Heidi's a big-time athlete, so to see him go up and put a defender on a poster is no surprise. So changes. Heidi will sit along with Smith, Edie, and Gillis. Miles Colvin in the game for the first time. Howard well short this time. Reed keeps it alive. 15 to shoot. Bounce it. Kick it. Another chance. This time it's just off the front of the rim. What activity by Reed. Washington. Llewellyn. Can't convert. One of the, one of the bright spots Juwan Howard's going to be able to look at he watches the tape is the way that Michigan has gotten to the offensive glass if Matt Painter had one complaint It would be their inability to shut down the defensive boards. He's not going to complain about Lance Jones no. who has scored from every angle tonight So Purdue has Morton, Colvin, Jones, First, and Kaufman Red Here's Howard on the attack, bouncing inside, Reed attacks the rim A pretty two-man game right there, Jace Howard comes off that handoff and Fundamental bounce pass, Terrace Reed Done by those two. Six points now for Reed. Morton's trying to get it in. He just threw it away. Reed on the takeaway. Washington running the lane. Kick it. Washington. A three. No, too strong. Approaching eight minutes to play here at Mackey Arena. Purdue on the brink. They're starting 10 0 at home. Lance Jones, the cross, the sauce, but the miss. Morton. Awesome. Right there for the board. Colvin, not shy, showing it off. Kaufman ran another offensive rebound, taken away. Llewellyn hits the deck, slow to get up. He has had a tough night in terms of some of the physical plays that have gone against Jalen Llewellyn. The 
hesitation. Beeline the bucket for two. But with all that being said, he has come right back at Purdue. Had a couple turnovers. It has gotten knocked around a bit, but he has 16 points on an efficient 6 of 11 from the field. Purdue shooting 50% from the floor and 63% from three. It has been an onslaught from the outside. Jones, a big reason why. Good finish. I honestly don't know if, if they don't turn the basketball over, which they still, they, well, they, they turned over a little bit more here in the second half. But they have four turnovers in a game and they make double digit threes. They're going to be so hard to beat. Well, it leaves it short. Morton Bear hugs the board. Jones running the floor. Attacks on Washington and Colvin will slow it down. Smart play by Lance Jones to not force the alley oop there. Miles Colvin running the floor, but Michigan had taken it away. Contested, doesn't matter. Miles Colvin, money. Timeout, Michigan. He's almost there to join Patrick Ewing, did it at Georgetown, and the Admiral. David Robinson, who did it at Navy. That's it. Yep. It'll be three names over the next couple games as Edie scores nine more points and blocks seven more shots. He's a generational player. I have to assume he's going to win National Player of the Year again. And the, the list of players who have won that award twice are the who's who of college basketball as well. So I just think that Purdue fans need to not take his greatness for granted. Because I'm not sure that you'll ever see someone like Zach Eady again play at Purdue. Last player to win back to back. Dressed for the occasion. One of the coolest moments every year. We see this in college basketball. Juwan Howard going with the Jordan 1 lows. A Jordan School, Michigan. And making it happen. Making it look good in the process as well. I, I love the fact that, that coaches across college basketball team up with the American Cancer Society. And certainly this year, trying to raise awareness for cancer screening. It's such a big deal. Certainly, we all can go and get screened. Just go to coaches.cancer.org and, and find out where testing centers are around you. Really great cause. Brings both teams together. Nearly another turnover for Purdue. But Coffin Wren hits the deck, and it'll be a tie-up staying with the Boilermakers. So six to shoot. It's Coffin Wren, Colvin, first, Heidi, and fourth. And it's Williams, Washington, Wellen, Kamwa, and Reed. Morton, the trigger man. Lobbit, Kaufman, Wren. He's going to have to put it up. Jimmy Shake, the drive. The deuce. It's amazing how he just continuously finds ways to get to his right hand and his left shoulder. I mean, you know the scouting report says, take it away. But he just, much like Luis Scola used to do for the Pacers. He just gets there. It's really incredible. That had to be so frustrating after going oh, like that. I knew witnessed. exactly what it was. I knew exactly what the scouting report said. And every time he'd score, you'd go back to the bench and the coach would say, how can you let him go to his right hand? But everybody does. That's going to be on the floor as Williams claimed his own rebound. LaMarcus Aldridge, I know, was just talking about that recently, how he only had a couple moves. This is Skola. Oh, and no, he is. And Skola's deal was he'd go up and under like he was going back to his left and then whip right back around to his right. And Trey Coffin Wren's got that as well. He, he's got that in his arsenal. Meanwhile, Will Bird on the floor. Brian Waddle on the floor. This is just a one and one. Yeah, so. I don't think, yeah, th these are not what the students are looking for. They're looking for more fouls to get to the double bonus. So they did just miss a front end of the one and one yeah, prior to like this, but it doesn't count. Two missed opportunities. Yes. They've been in the double bonus. These, now we're talking about some sandwiches. More. Colvin. Another three. Another hit. This jumper looks so pure. He's got a ton of ability. Has a play a ton of late. You see the talent, you see the confidence from the freshman from Indianapolis. It's this end where he can I think still earn some minutes on the floor. Has to guard better, but he, his time is coming. Washington, and he's bumped on the outside, so it will be one final one and one opportunity. 4.58 left. That means there's going to be a lot of two-shot fouls coming up. <laughs> That's very true. 
Nobody's really left the stadium. I mean, this game has been well in hand for the second half. And Miles Colvin's parents right there. This place is still uh, jam packed. Washington true on the first free throw. Washington athletic. Good rebounder on his side, just a freshman, but somebody that Juwan Howard and his coaching staff believes could be a good piece moving forward for this program. Getting some valuable minutes in one of the tougher places to play in the conference. And across, first, around the board. First finds the soft spot, but he traveled. So for Purdue, going to be 10 and 0 here at home. You go two Rutgers next before a big revenge game, hosting Northwestern. In a game that it feels like two losses on the season, both in conference, one at Northwestern, one at Illinois. That Northwestern was the, the conference opener for Purdue, and both times, both teams. Were really uber efficient from three. Yeah, made threes. Purdue turned it over. I just thought Northwestern's guards torched Purdue. And you have to think that the trio of Lance Jones, Brady Smith, and Fletcher Lloyd are going to be really motivated to, to not let that happen again. Berg is fouled and Reed is out. He has hit the quota. Rebound. He, he bound Zach Eady and this. Still gets his double double. And I thought Terrace Reed did a nice job of guarding Edie in terms of one on one defense. So Berg will go to the free throw line. His sixth and seventh attempts of the season. And I don't know where Matt Painter finds these bodies because you've got Zach Edie at 7 4 300. Will Berg, just a redshirt freshman, 7'2", 255. Well, there, there's just more on the way. Yes. The thing I'm wondering is, where were these big bodies when I was playing <laughs> here for him? Because we didn't have guys like this. <laughs> it would have made life pretty easy. Yeah, no doubt. Couple seals, couple extra points. Offensive board you know, kick out. Hashim the beat was out there at that That's time. That's a good point. Have thought that we, you know, now you look at Purdue, we would have been a lock to get him. Cowboy. No. Berg, another board. Very high on Will Berg. But think about this. If you come in as a freshman and you play against Zach Eady every day, you're either going to get broken or you're going to get better. And he has gotten better. Offensive foul will lead to a timeout on the floor. Final 348 here from West Lafayette with Purdue is at Wisconsin. So they go to Madison for a tough one on the road. Three teams in the top 13 of the AP poll for the first time this season. You've got Purdue, of course, at number two. Illinois back to the top 10. And Wisconsin sitting at number 13. And Purdue handling their business right now. Wisconsin with a victory. Illinois getting their firepower back with Terrence Shannon back on the floor. Burnett knocks through a three for the Wolverines. Maybe that jump starts him. Just two of nine from the field tonight. Had not been shooting well the last three games. And they're going to need DeMar Burnett, especially on the road. No Doug McDaniel. They're going to ask a lot of him. Colvin can't miss. Uh, he, he just, and the crazy thing is, is he comes in off of not playing or playing a minute, and he just stays hot. <laughs> he, he is always in the mentality that he is hot. So Morton picks up the foul, but Burnett's going to shoot this too. Is, yeah, this is good for the Purdue fans. Michigan going a little bit of zone. You hit the middle, and then you just spray this thing out. Burnett, 72 percent. Quiets the crowd. Onions right there. <laughs> it's the biggest pressure free throw no, you're going to no take. Doubt. No doubt. But that's what makes this promo cool. This game has been over for the entire second half, yet it's going to be a standing ovation. If somebody misses the first foul shot, Jackson Salvala checks in for Kamwa. Meanwhile, on the floor for Purdue, Morton, First, Berg, Waddell, and Colvin. And into the middle, Berg inside on the seal. That's just so easy for Purdue. He's flashed by Caleb First and better seal from Will Berg. Burnett, get it? Washington, 
Watch it's pure. Man, good opportunity for a guy like George Washington the third. One point since November 10th coming into the night, and now maybe this jump starts his offense a little bit. Freshman getting an opportunity on the road. Would else get pass and a foul away for the ball. On the inside, gonna go against Williams. Williams isn't on the floor, but they set number five. So who's the foul on? I got Cheddar. Cheddar it is, and that's gonna be the quota for him as well. Fifth personal foul on Cheddar. He will head to the bench. Matt Painter clears his bench. Carson Barrett's gonna check in for Purdue. Chase Martin is in there. Waddell, Bird, and Sam King for the Boilermakers as well. Meanwhile, Michigan will go deeper into their bench. Ian Burns in for Burnett. Out there with Washington, Kayat, Harrison Huckberg, and Jackson Selvala. This free throw, and Waddell keeps it alive. Barrett lost it, and out of bounds, it'll stay with Purdue. Well, the offense has been explosive since the loss two weeks ago to Nebraska. Four straight points, four, point, four straight games with at least 84 points. The crowd wants a lot to happen here with the extended <laughs> run. Instead, Berg is going to miss. And the longer we're going to lose it, a foul. Opportunity here, though. Well, Washington on the season, just one of two coming in from the free throw line. I feel like the students are, are still here for this reason and this reason only. They want slim chickens, not slim pickings. <laughs> Big first one. Ooh. Ice in his veins. <laughs> this reminds me of when Isaiah Thomas was getting heckled by a fan in Philly. And he went back at the fan. And the fan said, sorry, bro, I just wanted a free frosty. <laughs> exactly. That's all I need. This fan's just ruined want, this for me. This is what free food and drink. for me, yes. Kick. Kick out. Martin. On the drive. Nearly got the roll. Hockberg clears. Washington will run it. Just under two to play. Good opportunity and experience for both teams here. Deep in their bench. Oh, oh that was an awkward landing from Washington and a turnover on a travel. Juwan Howard checks in on his guard here. But Washington did just put a little extra hurt in the hearts of the fans here. This was the reaction for the make. Right there. Oh, devastation. <laughs> Surprise, no surrender Cobras there. <laughs> Approaching 90 seconds to play here. Waddell looking to get rid of it. Martin. Back from Barrett. Waddell on the take. Double. Ten to shoot. The games. A three. Carson Barrett from downtown. Final minute in West Lafayette. Washington responds. A deep one. It's coming to the game and made some shots. Cross court for Waddell on the take. Oh, wow. Hello. Exclamation point. A brilliant Boilermaker offensive showing and a fantastic finish. Can they break 100? Waddell with a four-second difference. And 
And it looks like they will slow it down all the way. Train the clock. Fans want that triple digits, and they won't get it. I'm not sure you could ask for much more out of Purdue in this game. Highlights, execution, all the little things done. And Mount Painter's team, the number two team in the country, showed pure dominance from start to finish. 99-67, the final score as the Boilermakers bury the Wolverines.